Right, so in this particular video, I'm going to have a look at um, the equation of lines that are parallel or perpendicular to a particular line that we're given. So um, as a first example, I'm going to have a look at this line here, x minus 3y plus 6 equal to 0. And let's say it looks like that there. Now, I'm going to, the question really is, um, what's the equation of another line uh, that's parallel to that line? So we want, we know that this is the equation of this line here. I want to know what's the equation of this line here. And that line there happens to pass through the point 2, 4. So I need the equation of a line, basically. So the first thing I do is write down y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. This is the general, general formula for the equation of a line. If we want to find the equation of a line generally, this is where we... Uh, this is the, the formula that we look at. Now, in order to use this formula, we need two things. We need to know the slope of the line we're looking for, and we need a point on the line that we're looking for. Now, we, as it turns out, we have a point on the line. We have 2, 4. So this is our x1, y1. So that's perfect. We have two, uh, two of the three things, if you like, that we need. We have the x1, we have the y1. We don't have the slope yet. Now, one thing you've got to remember about slopes is that if the slope of this line is a particular value, then the slopes of any other line that is parallel to this line is exactly the same. So in other words, the steepness, if you like, of this line is going to be exactly the same as the steepness of this line. If you're walking up this hill and someone else is walking up this hill, you're walking up two hills of the same slope, basically. Okay, so really all we've got to do is find the slope of this line here and that means we'll have the slope of this line here because they're both uh, parallel so we got to take this equation here and we've got to work out the slope of it now in a previous video i showed you how to work out the slope of a line by rearranging the values or the terms of this um, to make it look like y is equal to mx plus c so if we can rearrange these terms to look like y is equal to mx plus c, then all we have to do is read off the slope, and that'll give us the slope of our, our line and the line we're looking for. Now that's one way of doing it. I'll show you another way in a minute. We'll do that first, and then we'll look at the other way of working out the slope. So let's take our equation. Our equation is x minus 3y plus 6 equal to 0. Now I want to get the y on its own, so let's get rid of the... Um, let's get rid of the x and the plus 6 over to the other side so it'll become minus x and minus minus 6 uh, just rewrite that minus x minus whoops let's do that again and that's minus 6 okay so minus 3 y is equal to minus x minus 6 now we still don't have the minus uh, or so we still have a minus 3 here, we don't want that, we would just want a plus y. So let's get rid of this minus 3. The minus 3 is multiplied by the y, so we've got to divide by minus 3. D divide all terms by minus 3. So divide this side by minus 3 here, it'll cancel. Divide this by minus 3, it's minus x over 3, or minus 1 over 3, uh, minus 1. This is a minus 1 here, if you like. There's a minus 1x here. So it's minus 1 divided by minus 3. And here we end up with minus 6 divided by minus 3. So let's see how that simplifies out. Well, we have our y on the left-hand side. That's perfect. We've got minus divided by minus, which is plus. So we end up with 1 third x. And here again, we have a minus divided by minus. So that's plus. 6 divided by 3 is 2. Now, this is now in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So we can see here immediately that m is here. And we also, as a matter of interest, know that the line cuts the uh, y-axis at plus 2. But we're not really interested in that at the moment. All we want is the slope here. Uh, so we now know the slope of this line, and we also know the slope of this line here. They're both the same, 1 over 3. And that was the last piece of the jigsaw that we needed to fill into this formula here. So um, now I said earlier that I'd show you a separate way of working out the slope uh, given the equation of a line in this format here. So we have uh, x minus 3y 
plus 6 is equal to 0. Um, now this here is in the form ax plus by plus c equal to 0. If you want to find the slope of this particular line and you don't want to rearrange all the different terms, what you can do is just simply uh, use the formula m is equal to minus a over b. So our a in this particular case is 1. There's a 1 here, 1x. One so it's minus 1 over. Our b here in this case is minus 3. This is our b here. Our a here is the 1. There's a 1 in there if you like. Yeah. So our b is minus 3. So minus 3 is on the bottom here. So when you work that out, minus divided by minus is plus, and we do end up with 1 over 3. Here we had 1 over 3 as well. So that's a different way of working out the slope. So anyway, we've worked out the slope two different ways. We got the same answer, so we know we're okay. So let's work out the equation of this particular line here. Remember, we have this line here. We have the equation of it. We have a point on this particular line, 2, 4, and we've just worked out that the slope of this line is also 1 over 3, the same as this here. So we can now just substitute 1 over 3 in here, substitute 2 in here, substitute 4 in here, work out the equation of this line here. So let's do that. So we have uh, y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. So we know that our y1 here is, this is our y1, our point is 2, 4. So I just got to put in a 4 here. Uh, our slope is 1 over 3, x minus 2. That was our x1. So now when we have a fraction here, usually what we can do is multiply everything by whatever's on the bottom here. We have a 3 on the bottom, our denominator is 3. So multiply everything by 3. Or just take this 3, if you like, and bring it up here, multiply. Uh, so what we end up with is 3 times y minus 4. And then we're left with a 1 here, times x minus 2. So that gives us 3 times y is 3y, three, 3 times minus 4, minus 12. Uh, 1 times x is x, and then 1 times minus 2 is minus 2. Okay, so let's look at that then. We go, I'm going to put it in the form ax plus by plus c equal to 0. So I'm going to take 0 on this side, and I'm going to leave the x here minus the 3y when I bring it over. I've got a minus 2 here. Bring the 12 over, it becomes plus 12. So I end up with 0 is equal to x minus 3y minus 2 plus 12 is plus 10. This is the equation of my new line. x minus 3y plus 10 equal to 0. Okay, so that's example number 1. That's where we have two parallel lines. What about perpendicular lines then? Let's have a look at that. So let's take example number two. So let's take um, the equation, let's say 2x uh, plus 3y plus 6 equal to 0. And we're going to take the point 1 minus 6. So what we're going to do, we're going to take this equation here, uh, this line here rather, and it's going to look maybe something like this. And we're going to take a point 1 minus 6. So let's say that's 1 minus 6 out here. And what we're going to do in this case is look for the equation of a line that is actually perpendicular to the line that we're given. And it passes through this particular point 1 minus 6. So this is a right angle here. So this line here, that the equation of which we're looking for, is perpendicular to the line that we're given. So let's see how we're going to work that out. Well, again, what we're going to do is use the formula y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. So in order to use this formula to find the equation of our line, we need a point on the line and we need the slope. Well, we have a point on the line. We have 1 minus 6. So we can put 1 in here. We can put minus 6 in here. Perfect. Now, what about m? We need to be able to find the slope of this line here. Now, all we have, the only bit of information we're given, really, is the equation of this line here. Can we find the slope of this line here? 
Well, yes, we can. Based on what I did previously, we can find the slope of this line here. Two different ways. We can rearrange it to look like y is equal to mx plus c, or I can just simply do m is equal to minus a over b, which is what I'm going to do in this case. This is already in the form ax plus by plus c equal to zero. So I have my a, I have my b, so I can just simply put in minus, my a here is two, b is three, so that will go on the bottom, it's plus three. So the slope of this particular line here, this line here is minus two over three. How can I use this to find the slope of this line here, which is perpendicular? Well, the general rule is <clears throat> for perpendicular lines, if you have this slope of one of the lines, to find the slope of the other line, you take this, this um, slope here, uh, you turn it upside down or get the reciprocal of it, turn it upside down and change the sign. So the slope of our new line, we'll call it M, we'll call it M1, is going to be 3 over 2. We turn this upside down, flip it upside down, 3 over 2. Also change the sign. So it's going to be plus 3 over 2. So the slope of this line here now is 3 over 2. And uh, a general way to prove that two lines are perpendicular, in fact, what you can do is if you want to prove that this, if you have the slope of one line is minus 2 over 3, the slope of another line is 3 over 2, prove that these two lines are perpendicular, what you can actually do is just simply multiply them. So minus 2 over 3 multiplied by 3 over 2, what you get is minus times plus, which is minus, 3 times 2, 6, 3 times 2 here is 6, you will get minus 1, you'll always get minus 1. So if you're asked in a question maybe to prove the two lines are perpendicular, you know both slopes, multiply them. If you get minus 1, they are perpendicular. If you don't get minus 1, they're not perpendicular. Okay, so we now have here the slope of our, the line that we want. We have a point on the line that we want, so all we've got to do is put the slope and the point into our formula and we'll have the equation of our line. So let's do that. So we started with y, wait, I'll just change that. Um, let's just rub that out, start again here. So we got y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1. So we have y minus, now the point on our line is one minus six. One minus six, so let's just write that here, one and minus six. So this is x1, this is y1, so let's put that in. So our y1 is minus 6. m we've just worked out as being 3 over 2. So that's 3 over 2 here. x minus, our x here is, our x1 rather, is 1. So this is the equation of our new line, our perpendicular line. So let's just simplify that. We've got y minus minus is plus 6 is equal to 3 over 2 times x minus 1. Let's just move that up a bit and finish it off. So we have a 2 here on the bottom. We have a fraction here. We don't like fractions. We like to get rid of fractions uh, if we can. So I'm going to take the denominator, which is 2. I'm going to multiply all these by 2. So or basically take that 2, bring it up here if you like. Multiply 2 by y plus 6. Multiply all this by 2. The 2 will cancel, and you're just left with 3 times x minus 1. So let's just do that out. So we've got 2 times y, which is 2y. Two, 2 times plus 6 is plus 12. 3 times x, 3x. 3 times minus 1, minus 3. So we'll just bring that up here. Now I'm going to put it in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0. So I'm going to put a 0 on this side. I'm going to take the 2y and the 12. I'm going to bring them over to the right-hand side of the equation. So I have my 3x. Bring the 2y over, minus 2y. I have my minus 3 here on the right-hand side. And the plus 12 is going to become minus 12. This then becomes 0 is equal to 3x, minus 2y, minus 3, minus 12, minus 15. This here is the equation of my perpendicular line. Remember, I started with a line like this. I wanted to find the equation of this line here. I had a point on it. And I had to work out what the slope was. I put it both, all, both of those, the point and the slope, into this formula. This is what I ended up with. This is the slope, or the equation, rather, 
of my perpendicular line. And that's it for finding the equations of perpendicular and parallel lines.